I'm going to show you an awesome mind magic card trick you can do using any deck of cards, even a borrowed deck. The cards are completely shuffled and mixed by any random participant. You can even have multiple participants shuffle the cards so they are completely mixed. By the way, you're doing a great job. Isn't it difficult to shuffle with all that on? No? Give it another shuffle or two and an extra cut. Are you good with that? Perfect. Then have your participant deal the cards down one at a time face up into three piles like this. As they're dealing the cards down, Bring to their attention that the cards have been shuffled and mixed to their heart's desire by them. Sometimes if they're taking too much time, they can deal more than one card or even switch it up a bit. Perfect. Eventually you'll get to three piles of randomized cards shuffled and mixed by your participant. Then you randomize it some more. We'll take the top card and the top card is an ace. So we'll spell out ace, A, C, E. Take the top card here, which is a three. We'll go one, two, three and throw out a card. And the top card here is a queen. We'll spell it out, Q, U, E, E. N. Now they're down to three cards. Have them select two of the cards. We'll get rid of this card. After all the shuffling and mixing and random choices by your participant or participants, have them select one more card. We'll get rid of this card and there's one card left. This is when you mentioned that before the routine you made a prediction and that you knew exactly which card this would be. They probably won't believe you so you're forced to prove it by showing that you placed a hidden prediction card in the card box prior to the routine. This is when you slide out the card and show that it does indeed match. I hope you enjoyed that. I know it was a little weird, but the point was to show the trick. There was nothing fake about the shuffles or the inevitable outcome for the trick. Anyone can truly shuffle the cards and make selections. This routine requires no sleight of hand. Repeat, no sleight of hand is required. Before I show you how to pull off this amazing card magic routine, just remember, if you don't want to know the secrets, then watch no further. Because once you do know, you can't unknow. Okay, here we go. This routine is based on Marlowe's unexpected prediction. It does not require any sleight of hand. As a matter of fact, you don't even need to shuffle the cards because your spectator does that for you. It's more like solving a puzzle. And there are many possible solutions. You will need to be fast with mathematics. It's not that hard after practicing for a while. And it's very simple math. The first thing we'll start with are the card values. Every card has a numeric value and this is what most people see. A 5 is a 5, a 6 is a 6, a 7 is a 7. It's pretty straightforward. When we get to the Jack, Queen, and King, they could represent 11, 12, and 13, respectively. Or they could be 10s, like in Blackjack. So without diving deeper, Jacks, Queens, and Kings can represent dual values. For instance, a King could be represented as a 10 or as a 13. Keep in mind that throughout this routine, you only need to focus on numbers 10 or lower, numbers 1 through 10. 
Next are the card suits. Most everyone knows the four suits. Hearts, spades, clubs, and diamonds. The spelling of these suits each represents a numeric value. If you spell out hearts, it contains six letters, hence a value of six. Spades also contains six letters with a value of six. Clubs contains five, and diamonds contains eight. Now, it would be very slow trying to spell out these suits in the middle of the routine while trying to do fast math in your head. So, an easy way to remember these values instantly is by a method I devised using the symbols associated to the values and not the number of letters in the suit's name. When you see diamonds, it has four corners, which is the division of eight, the number of letters in it. The other suits are a five and two sixes. So when you see diamonds, you automatically see an eight. When you see clubs, it looks like a hand doing a high five. You don't have to spell it out to know it instantly that it's a five. High five symbol equals five. The hearts and spades both have six letters and both use the same symbol system. By splitting them in half vertically, they look like the shape of a six. So when you see a hearts or a spades symbol, it's a six. Instantly, you see a six without spelling it. Once you have that down, now you can remove the S's from the end of each suit's word and have dual values for each suit, meaning each suit can have a value of one digit lower than its base value. Diamonds equals eight, but with the S removed, it's diamond, which equals seven. The same goes with each of the other suits, hearts or heart, equals six or five respectively. Spades or spade equals six or five. Clubs or club equals five or four. Diamonds or diamond equals eight or seven. Just remember, without the S's, it's one digit lower than the base number derived from the symbol itself. Are you still with me? Next is the spelling of the number on the card, including ace, jack, queen, and king. If you take all the cards, ace through king, there are only three numbers you can get from them. A three, a four, or a five. There are no others. Three numbers are fairly easy to remember, especially when they're low numbers. There's no method needed to instantly know an ace has three letters. Same thing with a two. You can see it in your head. So a two equals three, a five equals four. Yeah, I know. It'll all make sense though once we get into the routine. A six equals three, a 10 equals three. It's easy to see. Then there are the four lettered numbers, a four, a five, a nine, a jack, and a king. All easy to instantly see they have four letters. Threes and fours are the only ones you need to see because if it has more than four letters, it's a five automatically. No need to count. So finally, here's the reason for the madness behind all of this. It'll take way too much time to go through all 52 cards. So we'll just go over three cards for examples. You'll get the idea. Then we can move on to the routine. When you see the nine of clubs, you're actually seeing the numbers nine, eight, five, and four. When you see the three of diamonds, you're actually seeing the numbers 10, eight, seven, five, and three. When you see the jack of hearts, you're not seeing the jack of hearts. You're seeing the numbers 10, nine, six, five, and four. The nine of clubs has the value nine from its number in the corner. It also has the value nine by taking the number of letters in the word nine, which is four, and adding it to the number of letters in the word clubs, which is five. Four plus five equals nine. Remove the S from clubs, and it's four plus four equals eight. It has the value of five because it's a clubs. It can also have the value of four if you call it a club. The three of diamonds has a value of three from its number in the corner. It has a value of five from the number of letters in the word three. It has the value of seven from the word diamond. It has the value of eight from the word diamonds with an S. It has the value of 10 by adding three with the number of letters in the word diamond. Three plus seven equals 10. 
The Jack of Hearts has a value of 10 because it's a face card. It also has a value of 10 because of the number of letters in Jack and Hearts equals 10. 4 plus 6 equals 10. It has the value of 9 by removing the S from Hearts to Heart. 4 plus 5 equals 9. It has the value of 6 from the word Hearts. It has the value of 5 from Heart. It also has the value of 4 from the word Jack. Okay, here's how the routine starts. First, choose the card you want to predict. One of the fringe benefits of magically manifesting something is you're allowed to predict it. You can pick any card. I wouldn't use the Ace of Spades. It's a little too suspicious. But other than that, any card. Place your prediction card inside an empty card box or you can seal it inside a security envelope so nobody can see through and you just place that off to the side. You have your prediction card nonchalantly hidden off to the side unbeknownst to your spectators. Have them shuffle the cards. It doesn't matter how much the cards are shuffled and mixed. They can shuffle to their heart's desire. Have your spectator deal the cards face up into three piles. This is when you work your magical math skills. And remember, it's like a puzzle. There are many solutions depending on the cards you're dealt. Once they begin dealing, you begin counting. Have them deal the cards in sequence. So it's one, 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 two, 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 three, 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 four, four, four. You're counting to yourself. Five, five, five. There's your card right there. That's your prediction card. You see it. You know it's now the fifth card down from the top in the middle pile. And they continue on dealing. Once your card has been passed, it doesn't matter anymore if they follow this sequence. They can do two or three cards and you can tell them this because you already know your nine of hearts is five cards from the top in the middle pile. So just let them finish out however it comes out. Now without even looking at that first card, I already have a solution here. I have a heart right here. If I take the S off the heart, I have the number 5. So I can use that to count this way. Now if you don't have that and you need to see what that first card is, this is when you tell your spectator, look, you could have shuffled the cards any way you want. Pull them down like this. You're getting a view of what this card, what these cards are. I know I'm 5 down. Actually, I have a club right there. Clubs is 5. So I'm going to use that now and not this. You slide them down as you're explaining. Look, they're all mixed up. And you square them up. You turn them over. I know I'm five cards down here. So I'll take this one, turn the top card over. I have a hearts. So we're going to go H-E-A-R-T-S. Throw out a card. Get rid of these. Do the same thing now. Turn the top card over. We have a clubs. So we're going to spell that out. C L U B. Yes. Guess what card that is. It's one of the last final three cards already. Get rid of these. Do the same formula here. We have a spades. S-P-A-D-E-S. -E and you're down to your final three cards. This is what you want to happen every single time. You want to wind up with three cards. One of them is going to be your prediction card or the match to your prediction card. And the other are going to be throwaway cards. I'll explain how to throw away these cards at the end. Like I said before, there are many solutions depending on the cards dealt. So I'm going to show you a few scenarios and how to solve them. Let's suppose your spectator begins dealing the cards and your prediction card comes out on one of the first three cards. I mean, this is the easiest scenario ever. Your card's already down there. They can, you can tell them, do whatever they want three cards, four cards, you already know your card is the top one here. And just tell them to keep the piles as close as even as possible, but they can do whatever they want. When they get done on this one, you don't even need to touch the cards. Have them square them up, turn them over, and then say, take the top cards off of each one of these. Your job is done. There's your card right there. Let's say they're dealing the cards and your card comes out to the number two position right here. At this point, once again, 
let them deal a few more rows and then you can say look do three or four more cards like this you know it's second from the top in that pile and how you would deal with this I mean if you wind up with a two right there that would be great you can use that to count two that way just like that look at that we got lucky so at this point you can do it a couple different ways you might want to look at that top card explain to them look you could have shuffled them in any order now at this point there's two ways to get out of this this is the second card down there's your card right there and I have a ten of diamonds there's no way I'm gonna to get to that I could use this too square them up and we can turn them over I know my prediction card is the second card down here so I'll use that formula there's a two on the bottom here so I'll do the same thing I'll turn it over we have a king it's a ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Throw your card out. Get rid of these. What do we have on the bottom? We have a two. So we'll count one, two. I got my prediction card out there. Do the same thing with this one. You have an eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's your other throwaway card. So now I'm, my prediction match and my two throwaway cards. That's one way to do it. Suppose your prediction card came out the second one again and they randomly threw these on I'm just gonna do it really fast and let's say at the end look we almost wind up with a two again let's say there's no way out you have the queen here a queen of diamonds it's a second card down we have a five of clubs there's no math here so what you do at this point turn these over grab the top card and push it underneath like you're using it to scoop up the pile square them up and place it now you're going to do the same thing here. We're going to get rid of that top card. Turn it over, grab that top card, scoop, square. Now what we've done is we've pushed that nine to the top there. Same thing here, turn over, scoop, and square it up. Now you can simply take the top cards. And once again, you have your prediction match with two throwaway cards. Suppose your prediction match ends up being the third card down. Once again, once your card comes out, they can do whatever they want, it doesn't matter. You know your three cards down from the middle pile. And just remember if it's left, right, or middle. Now I have nothing with the nine here, so I wanna take a look at my top cards. Explain to everyone the cards are completely randomized. Now I can see what I'm gonna do right here. I have a clubs here, if I remove the S off the clubs, I have the number four. So I'm gonna take this top card and scoop it right here. So square these up. Use the top card to scoop, square them, and turn them over. Same thing here. Nobody's gonna notice what you're doing. They don't even know you're doing a prediction trick. So now I have a club on the top. I've added a card. So now it's no longer three cards down. It's now four cards down. I'm gonna use the club as my counter. Now once you've decided to use suits as your formula for counting, if it's with an S you want to call it three of diamonds or three of hearts. If it's not with an S you want to say it's a three and it's a heart. You don't want to call it hearts and then spell out heart. So this is how you would count. Turn the card over, it's a heart. H-E-A-R-T. Get rid of these turn the card over it's a club C L U B get rid of these turn this card over it's a spade S P A D E once again we've managed to get our prediction match in there with two throwaway cards now sometimes your prediction match will be on one side or the other just remember where it's at and how many cards down Another way to get to the third position would be this way. Your three cards down. We randomly finish these off quickly. Now, let's say you didn't have any mathematical formulas. You're like, oh God, what am I going to do now? Your third down. You do the same thing with the, taking the card off and scooping. You do one card here. When you come to your pile, you're going to turn it over. You're going to pull two cards and scoop it that way. Pull one card. Scoop it, turn it over. Let's say your prediction card is 
the third card once again. Now in this case I do have math. See I have an ace right there. I could spell out ace and get to that card third down. What I would do is I would count seven, spell out ace, and count five. Let's say your prediction card is the fourth card down. It starts getting easier here. This is when you, you want to look at your top cards. Look how all they're mixed. I can see I have a club right there. If I take the S off of clubs, I have four. So I'm going to use that club right there to count down to four. It's a done deal. Turn these over. Top card is a spade. S-P-A-D-E. Top card is a club. C-L-U-B. And the top card here is a spade, S-P-A-D-E. Once again, we have our prediction match and two throwaway cards. Let's say you're cruising along and you're counting 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, 4, 7, 7, 7, 8, 8, 8. There we are. We're at the number 8th position. So they continue on. So now we're at the eighth position here. Let's see what we got. Let's look at the top cards. Look at how they're all mixed. All right, look what I have here. I have a seven right there. And my prediction match is eight cards. So this is where you can fudge on the counting a little. I'll show you. So square these up and turn them over. This time when you count, you're gonna count all your cards here and then throw out an extra card. So it's like this. We have a three, so it's one, two, three. We throw out a card. We have a seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Throw out a card. That's the eighth card. There's my card right there. Get rid of these. Do the same formula here. We have a queen. It's a ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we throw out a card. Here's your two throwaway cards, and there's your prediction match. Let's say you're cruising along again, and three, 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 four, 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 eight, 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 nine, 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 ten, ten, ten. You get to ten, and your card hasn't come out yet. This is when you forget your entire count. You're starting from zero again. Now, they have to continue doing the same way. You're just going to wait for your card to show up, and have them keep going, and you wait for your card. There's your card have them continue to deal the cards down. Now you're going to count how many cards go on top of that and your card is number one. So as they're coming along this is two, three, four, and they're done. You know that your card is four cards down this way. Once again we'll look at the math to see how we can get to that card as you're showing. Look they're all mixed. Now what I see right off is if I take this jack and I move it to here, I can use and spell out the word jack, count four cards, and then fudge on the count and spit out a card. Turn them over. Scoop. Turn them over. Take a card and scoop. Turn them over. Take a card and scoop. Now I like to keep the cards face down as much as I can. It's just a little more mysterious when nobody can see what the faces are. So we'll take this, we'll turn it over. We have a jack. We're going to spell jack. J-A-C-K. Toss out a card. Now I like to turn them over there. Get rid of these. Do the same formula. Turn this over. I have a six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Throw out a card and turn it over. Same thing here. We have a two. One, two. Throw out a card and turn it over. It appears to your spectator that they are all random cards, but there's your, nope, there it is. Here's your prediction match. Don't forget where it's at. And here's your other throwaway card. Now you can do these face up, and you can keep an eye on it at all times. Let's say your card shows up almost to the entire end, and you're never allowed to let the spectator start doing two, three cards and mixing them up and all that. They're just going to have to go sequential. And you get down to here, you're like two. It's only two cards down. So you do the reverse as if it was two cards this way. There's not much of a formula you can get for the second card down unless you had an ace there 
or a two. You could count one fudge on the count or you could just count two down to it. This is how I would do it. I would just take the top card, scoop these, turn them over. Take the top card, scoop these, turn them over. Take the top card, scoop them and turn them over. And once again, you have your two throwaway cards and your prediction match. Suppose you came all the way to the end and this is how it ended. This is the second easy scenario. Your card wound up on the top. There's nothing you have to do. Just take the top three cards and toss them out. Get rid of all of these. They did all the work for you. Turn them over. Once you get to the final three cards, which is your two throwaway cards and the match to your prediction card, we're using the nine of hearts, we're going to get rid of the two throwaway cards using Magician's Choice. Have your spectators select two cards. If they select these two cards, your job is over. Just remove them and you're left with the nine of hearts. If they select these two cards, remove this one. If they select these two, remove this card. Now you can shuffle them up a bit. Just keep track of where your nine is. Place them down, do a little more talking and have them select another card. If they select this card, push it forward and remove this one. If they select this card, just remove it. It doesn't matter what they select, they'll always end up with the card that matches your prediction card. Now when you're doing the math, do whatever it takes. Add numbers together, fudge on the counts. For instance, a three of clubs can give you a nine if you spell the word three added with the spelling of the word club. Five plus four equals nine. Practice random scenarios until no matter what card you're dealt, you can solve it every time. And that is how you do that. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. Thanks for watching and that's it. Do I have any threes? Um, go fish. Do you have any twos? <laughs>